Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. Oh my God, this is amazing. This video is sponsored by Arian. In my last video, you guys suggested that I make a bowl out of patterned plywood and the results were fantastic. So nice that I figured I'd go back into the comments and see what you wanted me to make this week. The one that I settled on was knife handles. A lot of people want to see scales made out of patterned plywood. So I picked up a couple of kits from Rockler. I also bought a vintage hatchet off of eBay, a Boy Scout hatchet. This thing is pretty sweet and I think it's going to look amazing in patterned plywood. <laughs> So I got the idea to do a pattern plywood hatchet handle from my friend and fellow YouTuber, Keith Decent, who made one a couple months back. Uh, I really loved the look of it and my brother saw it and he said that I had to make him one for Christmas. So that's the plan. I'm making this for, for my brother and I asked Keith Decent if I, could, uh, if I could make one and he was all for it. So change up the pattern a little bit. Mine's gonna look a little different than his, but go check out his video if you haven't already. Over in the metal shop, I can start taking off the handle of this vintage axe. Uh, this is a Bridgeport Boy Scout axe. It's from probably the late 40s, and uh, it's actually in really good shape. I only paid about 40 bucks for it off of eBay, and the handles were perfectly fine, but I think they're going to look a lot better in pattern ply. Once I ground off the heads of the rivets, it was pretty easy to knock them through with a center punch. I decided not to go too crazy with the restoration of this, mostly because I really want my brother to use it. And if, if past uh, Christmas gifts have shown anything, sometimes when you make something look too pretty, nobody wants to use it anymore. So I'm just knocking off the rust. I'm shining it up a little bit so you can read the like Bridgeport logos and stuff. Um, but it's still a little bit rough around the edges, which I kind of like. Fortunately, the old scales were intact enough so that I could make a template for the new scales. I could also use the old scales to measure out for thickness. I just used the fence on my bandsaw to, to get it to the widest part of those scales. Then I could go over to my pattern plywood, pull off the tape, pull off the rubber bands, and cut it into tiles. If you're new to the channel and you're wondering what the heck is going on, this is a, a technique I call pattern plywood. I've been making a bunch of it. I've developed a whole bunch of different patterns. I've got loads of videos on the subject. So if you want to know more, uh, here's a playlist right here. And uh, there's more that I put out a video a couple weeks ago specifically on this pattern and how to make it. Um, so I'm not going into as much detail in this video, uh, but there's plenty of other content out there if you want to learn more. As soon as the panel was larger than my template, I knew I could start clamping it up. In the last video, I talked about these wedges and they are really a game changer when it comes to clamping up these glue ups. Uh, I'm just not getting the gaps that I used to in the pattern plywood. So I highly recommend if, if you're gluing up panels to try this technique out.
that panel needs a couple hours to dry before I do anything with it, so I decided to go over and start in on the knife kits. I got these off of the Rockler website, and they come with detailed instructions that you can download online. I just went ahead and printed them out, and I have to say, I'm not a knife expert. These are actually the first knives I've ever made, um, but I'm pretty excited about it. I've always wanted to make a knife, and these kits make it super easy. Rockler sells a whole bunch of different styles of knives. I settled on these two lockback knives. Uh, I just liked the size of them and the look of them, and I think they're gonna turn out pretty good. Uh, like I said, I don't have a lot of experience with knives, but um, I've seen Jimmy Duresta make plenty of them, so I should be okay. At the start, I really wasn't sure what pattern I wanted to use on these knives. I've got a lot of uh, scrap pieces at this point. Uh, I thought about using the red panels, which I still think would look really cool. But ultimately, I, I like the idea of this being like a matching set of uh, two knives and an axe, various different sizes. And once I started tracing it out on the dragon scale pattern, uh, I was sold. Uh, these are the leftover staves from the bowl build, and uh, I had two of them left over. So uh, it's amazing how much one of these panels can yield. If I were to make more knives, I could probably make, I don't know, four or five out of this one little piece. So that's a pretty cool thing about knife making. Uh, you do not need much material to, to make a really cool knife. So it was interesting, I kind of had to repeat this process several times making both the handle for the axe and the handle for the knife. What I realized here was that the easiest way to get the, the pattern to match on both sides is to resaw it. And I, I probably should have glued up a, a taller panel for the hatchet handle to make sure that it matched up, but um, you know, hindsight's 20-20. So I've seen knife makers do this before, and I've always wanted to try it. Uh, this is a little detail that's going to go right up against the bolster of the knife, and it's going to just finish off the, the pattern really well. So I'm starting with a small piece of black veneer. I'm gluing that to the surface, and then I back that with a piece of ash wood, which is going to pretty well match the birch in terms of lightness. I didn't have any birch in the shop. And then I glue the, the ash wood onto that front edge, and then on top of that, I put another piece of black veneer. So this gives it kind of like a little pinstripe on the front edge. It's a subtle detail, but I think it's gonna look really good. I cleaned and scuffed up the metal a little bit and then used Total Boat 4-Minute Epoxy to attach the scales to the knife bodies. This video is sponsored by Ariat. Since I spend a lot of time in my shop, I'm really tough on my clothes and that's why I'm excited to work with Ariat. Ariat is a clothing company specializing in equestrian, outdoor, and workwear. Product quality is their number one concern, and they're known for their world-class work boots, which I've got a pair on right now. These are the Rebar Wedge Mock Toe 6-inch waterproof work boot, and they're breaking in well after several days of woodworking and a number of Winston walks. I'm excited to put them through their paces over the next few months. I've also got on their Rebar Workman quarter zip hoodie, which uh, this is now like my favorite sweatshirt. I've been basically living in it for the last month and it's like a nice heavy weight, plenty of mobility, and the kangaroo pocket hides another pocket where I can put my cell phone in so it doesn't slip out while I'm working. By the way, I'm wearing a size small, so if you're about my build, that's the size that you're gonna be looking for. Ariat has a ton of great products from jackets to socks to jeans to dog puppies. Winston is sporting the pup puffer jacket, which will be keeping him warm all winter. Click the links in the description down below to see my favorite Ariat products and save 10% off your first order. Thanks Ariat, now back to the build. These two projects actually dovetailed really nicely because the dry times worked out to be pretty consistent. So now the panel was dry for the ax handle and I could start cutting it out. 
I used the template that I made earlier and I took a lot of care to make sure that the pattern matched on both sides. This is a tip that I picked up from watching Keith Decent's video. This is a really smart way of filling out this tang as opposed to trying to route around the handle material, which Pattern Plywood does not like a router. So uh, this is a much easier way of, of filling out that sort of concave section in the tang. I just took some blue tape, burnished the edge, cut those edges out, and then applied it to a piece of oak that was the right thickness. Once I had both sides templated, I could go over to the bandsaw and cut them out. The easiest way to get those handle bits to line up with each other is to use some wood glue and some CA glue as a clamp and then set them into place until the CA glue tacks up. Then you can remove it and then clamp it up and wait for it to dry. Back to the knife scales. These have uh, had plenty of time to cure. That epoxy is set up completely and now can start drilling out the pins for the larger knife. The smaller knife is pretty much ready to go, but this larger knife is going to need a little bit more work. The knife kit comes with a series of brass pens that you put in in a specific order. All of that is pretty well detailed in the instruction manual. I had one section where I was confused and I'm going to cover that in a second. I'm adding a bit of CA glue to each of the pins to hold them into place and uh, so that the knife doesn't kind of come apart over time. So this is the part that kind of threw me for a loop. I, I Maybe if you've made knives before, you would instinctively know how this all works, but I really didn't. Uh, apparently, so the lock on the top uh, locks into this spring in the back, but I didn't realize like how to put the spring together um, or how to bend it. What what I ended up figuring out is that you have to remove the knife blade and the pin that holds like the pivot for the knife and then uh, and then you can move it enough to get that spring to engage. So you pop it up a little bit and then it's engaged and then you put the pin in, then you put the knife in. That was it. It was a little confusing but didn't take too long to figure out. After that, you just have to line up all the pins and put the other side of the knife body on. Well, that's not good. You could probably chalk this one up to inexperience as well, uh, but basically what was happening is that that center pin, that pivot, uh, when there wasn't any tension on it, it would just fall straight through. So it's fine until you press the unlock and then uh, it just has all this room to move and can fall out and then the knife blade can fall out. So uh, I decided to peen that over. Maybe this is what you're supposed to do. I didn't see it in the instruction manual, um, but that's what I ended up deciding to do. That seemed to work fine. It held, holds together great now. Uh, I may have over peened it a little bit. It's it's a lot stiffer than it was before, um, but you know, first knife, I'm, I'm okay with that. After that, it's ready to sand down both this knife and the, the pin knife as well. So uh, I just ended up shaping them pretty basically on the, on the sander. Uh, one thing that is a little bit scary is when you get into that kind of knife lock area, it's, it's pretty easy to put a scar on it with the sandpaper. So um, I was being extra careful. I don't think I, I got it, but um, it got co close a couple times. So the pin knife, I kind of left half unlocked and that seemed to be enough so that that little lock area was out of the way of the sander.
with the knives basically done, I could go back over to the hatchet handle and uh, it was ready to unclamp. After seeing how the brass rods worked on the knives, I thought it'd be really cool to add a brass rod as a, as a pin in the axe. The only issue is that the size of the hole from the casting was really strange. It, it didn't seem to be any standard size and it was actually kind of oval shaped. So the next size up was a quarter inch. So I decided to drill them out so that they would match the brass that I already had. With the holes resized, I could then drill through the handle. I just attached it to the side of it, clamped it down, drilled through with the same drill bit. To keep the pin aligned, I had an extra quarter inch drill bit, so I stuck that in the hole and then lined up the second hole, drilled through that one as well. Keeping the drill bits inserted, I used those to align the, the left hand scale uh, so that I could clamp on the right hand scale, make sure they were aligned properly, and then uh, clamp it down. Then I could remove those pins one at a time, drill it out using the, the drill hole as a guide. I don't need the drill press anymore because those holes are already square. It took a minute just before gluing it onto the axe handle to shave off the bulk of the material with the bandsaw. I also took the time to add a couple veneers to the top of the handle so that the axe handle matched the knives a little bit better. Once again, I'm going to be using some epoxy to attach the scales to the side of the axe. I know the original axe didn't have any glue uh, between the parts, but I figure this is just a little bit of extra insurance so that it doesn't start to loosen up over time. And now is the part of the build that I've been waiting for from the beginning. This is the most fun part, in my opinion, uh, is shaping the axe handle. So first off, I get to trim off the brass pins. That's pretty easy to do on the bandsaw. And then I can take it over to the sander and start refining the shape. This is so fun. I wish it honestly lasted a lot longer because you get to refine it and finally see all of this hard work come together. I love seeing how the pattern plywood reacts to shaping it. I've done a few carved pattern plywood projects before, and it's always a surprise to see what that pattern looks like on its edges. In this case, it kind of reminded me of a woven handle, like um, like almost like a, a katana blade woven handle, um, it, or it kind of looked like snakeskin in a weird way, um, but it was completely unexpected and totally beautiful. After quite a bit of sanding and polishing, it was time to apply finish. And for this, I'm using a spray lacquer. It's gonna really make that pattern plywood pop and uh, it's gonna protect it for a long time.
Honestly, couldn't be happier with how these came out and if you guys want to see more projects like this make sure you leave a comment down below this this was entirely inspired by user comments and I love hearing your suggestions big thank you to Ariat for sponsoring this video big thank you to my patreon supporters as always you guys are the best and I'll catch you on the next one what the hell is this? don't drop it on me <laughs> don't, drop, don't drop it on anybody. <laughs> uh, uh, uh oh. I really don't know this. Is. It's something you ask for. It is? Uh huh. Oh, wow. oh. oh, <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. Oh my god. This is amazing.